What's up guys, it's Rod here in the Terrace Shop to talk today about the Rod Damas that I've been making. So if you guys haven't seen one of these, you don't know who I am. My name's Rod, I'm on the Terrace Pro team, and I've been making Kendamas since about 2014. So since I've had five years under my belt of making Kendamas, I have kind of figured out what I think a Kendama should look like. And so we're gonna to talk today a little bit about my shape and the things that I've come up with and hopefully answer some questions you guys have had floating around about these. So as I mentioned, I've been interning for about five years now. And in that time, I've of course made a lot of mistakes and learned a lot of things. I've learned the most important thing you could ever do with wood turning is make sure your tools are sharp. As sharp as you can possibly get them. And you will save yourself time along the way. That as well is just make sure you measure your stuff. Measure twice, literally twice, before you cut once. I'm the worst for this, so trust your old buddy Rod on this one. One of my favorite parts of it has always been just getting into a fresh piece and just making wood chips fly. Something feels really cool about it when you're just getting smashed out in the safety glasses with wood chips and it just feels good when you're slicing into a piece of wood. There's just no other feeling like it really. All right, so let's just get right into the nitty gritty about the shape here. So one thing you'll probably notice when you first pick up a raw dama is that it's got some nice sharp edges. It's got some nice fat cups on it. Um, a lot of modern kendamas have taken this on recently for good reason. It makes everything just slap a lot harder. Your lunars will sit there. Even a big cup, if you're just trying to big cup it, you're not going to miss because that cup is huge. The same with the sharp edges. It keeps those stalls nice and locked in, in place for when you're going for those long combos and you just want it to sit there. She'll sit there for you, bud. The spike is a little bit longer than your average kendama. And that just comes from me playing LBBs back in the day and stuff and just enjoying larger kendamas myself and so I like to incorporate that into my shape without sacrificing the playability and the lovability of the original kendama shape. So I like to try and keep that true to its core with, with adding my own flair to it in that regard. So kendamas these days are available in a lot of different species of woods. and. Something that I like to do to set my things apart is to laminate different woods together. So for example, I have this stack of wood here with some purple heart, white ash, and koa. And if you look at these, they all are very different colors, they're all different densities. When you add them together, they really bring out the shine in each other and add different properties that they wouldn't have on their own. And that's something that really makes me want to make different laminations and to add different woods is to just see how far I can push this and to make it more and more funky and to see what kind of designs we can come up with. I like to use machine made tamas just to ensure that they're perfectly round every time and you get a good finished product and then leaving the creative side which is the can to me and that way I can make whatever comes into my brain and add a nice tama on top of it to give you the freshest dama possible at the end of the day. So all of my hand-turned kendamas, once they're paired with a nice tama and ready to shred, get their own personalized information card. Now each one of these cards contains the information of the weights for the ken and the serado, as well as the date it was made, the materials it's made out of, and each piece gets its own individualized name. I basically hang out with the kendama that I made for a couple minutes and try and vibe out what I think it reminds me of. I myself personally enjoy a lot of cartoons and video games from my childhood and stuff like that and so a lot of the names and things that I choose come from those places. So I really encourage you to look up the names of any of the cans that you have or have seen and see if you can catch the reference that I threw in there. Making kendamas for me has been a journey that I never thought I was going to embark on but now that I'm here I couldn't be happier and I couldn't feel more love from the community and Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart from all of you who have ever picked up a Dama, given me a high five, liked a picture, anything. It really means the world to me. Um, if there's anything that you're looking for specifically, like a custom, or you just want to know what I got, feel free to hit me up. If you just want to say what up, Rod, hit me up on Instagram. It's Rod Dama, R-O-D-D-A-M-A, two Ds. Or you can hit up the Tara Kendama Instagram or tarakendama.com to see what's available and online now. Um, all of these kendamas are pretty much one of a kind. I do make themes, but they are all a little bit different being that they're handmade. So don't sleep, get them while you can. And if you miss it, hit me up. Maybe we can work something out. Until then, go play some kendama, you nerds. Much love, catch you later. 
cut print, send it to YouTube.